We all know the last few years have been more than interesting as we see the trajectory and where our world is headed. Um, stick with me here in this video because at the end, I'm going to give you some action items because the things you're about to see might make you a little bit depressed, might make you think that there's just nothing you can do. I'm here to tell you, yes, there are some things you can do. There are some action items that I want to leave you with in order to pursue excellence and pursue a more sustainable and liberty-minded lifestyle. Okay, so stick with us. Over the last number of years, about a, for sure over the last few years, there have been, oh, I don't know, a number of mysterious fires on our food production plants across the country. But as a quick overview, I'm going to take you back to the one that we saw back about almost last year. Check this out. Do you remember this fire? It killed almost 20,000 cows. Okay, this was a dairy farm, and I have no idea <laughs> how do you kill almost 20,000, 18,000 cows in a single go. They say it was because of a manure truck, but apparently they stuff in Texas, they stuff their manure trucks full of, you know, small thermal nuclear devices. I mean, how did this even go down? Did they get all the cows, round them up, put them tightly packed into a barn, and then roll in this manure truck, you know, with a suitcase nuke, and then set it off? I have, and, and what they came to, the conclusion was, this was no intentional act to cause a failure. But we did not determine the cause of the engine fire. So it's like we know it wasn't intentional, but we can't determine the cause. That doesn't make sense. How in the world? Moving on. Now we have the Texas fires that are going through and destroying cattle. Some estimates say up to up to 7,000 cattle have now perished in these Texas wildfires that are going on over near the Panhandle. I don't know exactly, but that's the estimates that I'm seeing online this morning. You know, are these are destroying the cattle ranches? Will the beef industry survive? If they're asking that question, will the U.S. beef industry survive? You know, it's bad. I'm not going to read through all these articles. I'm just kind of giving you an overview. Now we're going to move on to the next one. Just last week, New York Attorney General Letitia James wages war on beef and latest lawfare climate change crusade. Now, she is basically filing a lawsuit against JBS, which is the world's largest beef producer. Okay, the world's largest beef producer. And saying that they are leading us all astray in their commitment to sustainability. They're harming the environment. And the only way to get them under control is to bankrupt the company. <laughs> so, and what, it, what will be the end result of that? It will be the fact that you, don't, you no longer have beef or that it'll be so high priced that you won't be able to afford it. James reassured the public that her office will always ensure that companies do not abuse the environment and the trust of the hardworking consumers for profit. Conveniently, Times with James's lawsuit is an announcement that the latest advancements in lab-produced synthetic meat, net, which now costs 90% less to manufacture, the so-called cellular agriculture or the growing of fake meat in a lab, will challenge the real meat industry that James and other climate crusaders are trying to destroy. Does James have financial ties to the synthetic meat industry? Hmm, I don't know. The real beef industry is being attacked on all sides with mysterious fires and lawsuits while the emerging synthetic beef industry is making major strides in reducing production costs. Can you say conspiracy? But in our next article, we're going to come to the point of this video, and that is the C4 cities. I think I want to show you and just drive home the point. We've talked about this here before on my channel briefly, but I really want to dive in, into this and show you exactly what your future holds because they are laying it out crystal clear in black and white and in color. I want you to see what your future holds. Now, when you go to the C4s, C40.org, C40.org, it talks about their future plans. Now, this is something that is backed by the World Economic Forum, okay? This is what they want to try to push, and a number of cities and mayors all around the world have signed up to this, a number of them. I, I believe almost 100 cities and mayors have signed up for this. Now, when you first go to the website, C40.org, you notice this cute little cartoon picture here. What you will not see are any animals being raised for food. You have vegetables, you know, here and over here, and they're harvesting their vet, but no animals. There's no animals. And each little shack or home has a single window to it, <laughs> has a solar panel on top, 
and one solar panel is not enough for you to power a, a you know a washer machine and dryer which is why you have this woman over here she is pulling water from a rain catchment cistern and that's how she's doing her laundry because that's your future folks you you're not going to be given enough solar panels because that takes resources and we want us all to be poor you know evenly and, and and equally so you get your solar panel and you can do with that what you want inside your home with one single window and you can come outside to enjoy the sunlight and vitamin d while you do your laundry under you know the rain catchment cistern <laughs> Listen, there's a message in this. If you're not catching it, you're not paying attention. Okay, now let's go over to their menu and see what great, great things we have here. And they have a lot of great things here. You should go through and just read them and be careful to take it, take it all in in increments because you might get so angry and so frustrated that you may have to like stop and then just come back and start off where you left off. But let's go right over here to food systems in the menu, scaling up climate action food systems. Let's click on that. And it's going to give you an in-depth, detailed way of how we're going to reestablish these food systems and make them so that everyone can enjoy our new environment and how we can reduce all these global emissions. If you go down here and you click on Accelerators and you click on View, Good Food Cities, it takes you to this Good Food Cities Accelerator. It's going to tell you how you can accelerate to make your city a good, a good food city. And if you scroll down, let's read this here. Cities committing to this accelerator will work with residents to achieve a planetary health diet for all by 2030. With a balanced and nutritious food reflective of the culture, geography, and demogra dem demographics, I would say dem demography, demographics of their residents. So a planetary health diet for all, all by 20. That would include you and me, folks. So let's go ahead and click on that link and learn what our planetary health diet will be by 2030. It takes you right here to this website, eatforum.org, the planetary health diet. Join us to benefit both people and planet. This right here is going to be your food from now on. <laughs> Every meal, it's this right here. This is the worst day of my life. It's the worst day of your life so far. Okay, uh, let's scroll down, and I want to pay attention to this graph that we have here. And it's basically, let's read the, this small paragraph here. The planetary health diet is a global reference diet for adults that is symbolically represented by a half plate of fruits and vegetables, half plate. The other half consists primarily of whole grains, plant proteins, beans, lentils, pulses, and nuts, I don't know what a pulse is, unsaturated plant oils, modest amounts of meat and dairy, and some added sugars and starchy vegetables. Wait a minute. I thought if I thought vegetables were included in the first half of the plate. How are we getting more vegetables in the second half? It says the diet is quite flexible, quite flexible. I, I seriously doubt their version of flexible and my version of flexible are the same and allows for adaptation to dietary needs, personal preferences, and cultural traditions. Vegetarian and vegan diets are two healthy options within the planetary health diet, but are personal choices, personal choices. So here's where it's going to be. You're going to get your first half your first half of fruits and vegetables on here, and then you're gonna get some added, you know, vegetables right there in that slice. Some whole grains, plant protein, which if it's plant protein, are you now eating more vegetables? Unsaturated plant oils, added sugars, and this right here, these little things, these are your little slivers of animal protein and dairy, dairy foods. Those little slivers, that's all you get. This is the diet of the future. And all of these cities, almost 100 cities now, and their mayors have signed up to make sure by 2030, this is your new future, future diet. Now, Zach, you might be saying, oh, you're just, you're just trying to fear monger. You're just trying to stir up a crowd. You're just, you're overreacting, Zach. Dude, they're telling you. They're telling you right on their website what they want to do. Did you think that you would be living in the world you're living in just three or four years ago? Has the world not turned completely upside down? They are telling you where they're going. It's your choice whether or not you believe them. 
I'll fight you for it. Like it or not, this is your future. They, barring some sort of violent uprising by the people, and throughout history there have been many of those, so I'm not, you know, ruling that out because that can absolutely happen. The media is completely ignoring the farmers over in Europe. And I keep telling you and making the, making the fact uh, that tractors and poo, you know, manure on government buildings is not going to work. Give those farmers rifles and it will work. And people say, well, Zach, it did work. They got those people to reverse course. No, they didn't. No, they got them to pause. They got them to, oh, we'll just give them some time. Give them a little bit of chance to forget. Give them a little bit more bread and circus. And then we'll go ahead and continue with our agenda. But 2030 is coming quick, fast, and in a hurry. And they have not let up on that goal. Tar and feathers, torches and pitchforks. That is what changes the course of corrupt human leadership. That and that alone. Now, we'll wait and see if that happens. But barring that, this is where you're headed. This is where they want to go. What can you do to prepare? Say, Zach, I don't, I don't know. Here's what I'm going to tell you to do. You go out and you find farmers and ranchers right now who are growing their own food. This guy, like this Amish guy right now, I mean, he's being completely railroaded. I guarantee you they wouldn't do this to a normal farmer up in Pennsylvania. No, they're doing it to the Amish because the Amish are pacifists. <clears throat> the Amish will not raise arms up against a tyrannical government. But you do this to regular farmers, we'll, we'll skip the tractors. I mean, regular farmers normally keep shotguns above their door, you know, or above their fireplace mantle as a regular basis. You know, we, this is the land of the AR-15, and there are lots of them. Go pick, up on, go pick on an Amish farmer. Yeah, you, you, can win, you can win that fight all day long, as long as the courts are even in your, in your circle. But you pick on people like, oh, I don't know, a rancher like Clive Bundy, and now you've got people who are armed and been waiting for this moment, you know, been waiting for this, <laughs> this itch to scratch for a long, long time. Here's what you can do. You go find these farmers out there who are raising sustainable meat and you support them. There are lots of people out there. You can find them online who are raising raw milk, who are raising, you know, grass fed beef, who are raising, you know, farm free range chickens. And you go support those farmers. And if you live in the city, you buy from them. I know it's going to take you a little bit longer to get out to their place and pick up their food and then transport it back. I know it's a little bit out of the way. I know it's more effort, but you have got to be able to make a stand. You have got to start voting with your dollars. And all of these bioengineered ingredient foods that you're finding in the store, stop buying them. I know it's a little more. I, I have to go. I have a grocery shop. I have to go to the store and I have to look around and look at labels and be like, oh, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that and put it back on the shelf. But I'm going to vote with my dollars. And if I'm the only one last person on earth who votes with my dollars, then I will be that person. You have to do the same. Stop buying these. Look on the ingredients of everything and see if it says bioengineered ingredient, put it back and find something that is not made that way or use an alternative or make something from scratch. I used, I listen, I used to, full disclosure, I used to buy canned chili, okay, in the store because it was an easy, simple way to make a dinner when I was busy. You know, my kids want dinner. They're hungry. I can open up a can of chili, add some spices to that, you know, add some maybe some noodles to make it like a chili mac and then call it good. Easy way. But I, I don't buy canned chili anymore because even th there was one brand, one brand left in the store that did not put soy in the canned chili. And I'm like soy oils and soybean oils and all this stuff or made with bioengineered ingredients. All of the Campbell stuff is completely ruined. I don't, I've been, I haven't bought Campbell's and stuff in years, but there was one brand that didn't put any soy, any soybean oil in the chili. And that I went to the store the other day and I picked it up just to look at the label. Cause I always do no matter what I looked at the label and they started putting soy in the darn chili. I said, well, boys, I guess we're not doing chili anymore. I have cans of chili still on my shelf. It don't have soy in it. And they're like cans of gold because they're the last ones I'll ever buy. 
Zach, you're, you're just being too, you know, it's okay, Zach. You, you can, no, it's not okay. I will not cut corners on this. This is why you, our population is sterile. This is why we're fat and depressed and addicted to porn and video games. Because we will say, we won't say no. I'm saying no. Find these farmers out there who are raising this good meat and good products and support them. Vote with your dollars. And if any government bureaucrat from some stupid agency shows up and says you can't buy this anymore, you Yeah, I'm a little worked up. The last couple of videos have really got me going. <laughs> I think I think a lot of us are, are just, hey, we've had it up to here. And it's, it just is what it is. Okay. All right. We'll leave it at that. Uh, hey, check out these books. You know, listen, this is my medicine cabinet. Okay. You, if you try to buy these books on Amazon, you're going to pay $800 for one, $900 for the other. The reason they're so expensive is because of the valuable information contained within. This is my medicine cabinet. It doesn't tell you how to make tinctures. There's plenty of videos out there for that. It tells you why you make the tinctures and what to use them for and when to use them. Okay. This right here, this is stuff that was written back in the 1800s, late 1890s by this guy, Dr. A.B. Howard. They're long out of print. I think the last time they went to print was back in, I don't know, 1990 something. I'm not sure. And the PDFs that I'm going to give you at my Patreon page is going to be the third and final edition of this content right here. You can join my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. And if you do so, I will give you the links to download these PDFs. And many of my patrons have gone and gotten this printed. And I even gave a link to my patrons to a company that will print these for you. You have to join my Patreon to go find it. If you join at higher levels, I really appreciate it because you're supporting my channel. So thank you very much. But just a dollar a month gets you into this and gets you this very, very valuable information. You need this information. Guys, they want you addicted. They want you drugged up. Don't give in. Learn how to do these things on your own. This is stuff that people use for thousands of years. And it, in the last hundred years, this is they have tried so hard to erase this knowledge. And that's why they're so expensive. All right. See you next time in the homestead. Bye. Have you ever gone to a health food store and seen all those small bottles of probiotics in your cooler section? Man, can they be pricey. Are you really getting all you need to improve your gut health from those expensive bottles? How viable are they? Most of those products claim to give you between 8 and 15 strains of gut-healthy healing bacteria. Think of each strain of bacteria as a different factory in your gut. Each factory is responsible for breaking down that food in its own way. The more factories you have, the more the food is broken down and the easier the food is absorbed and digested by the body. A 2018 study published by the National Library of Medicine shows that one fermented head of cabbage can produce up to 114 strains a beneficial bacteria. That's a lot more food factories than you're getting from that expensive pill bottle. And that's just cabbage. Imagine the probiotics when you add garlic, onions, pepper, and more to that ferment. PerfectPickler.com and its home fermentation kits provide you with everything you need to get started making your own gut healthy food factories from the comfort of your own kitchen. PerfectPickler.com even provides a jam packed recipe book with many of our kits. Visit PerfectPickler.com and start fermenting your own veggies to begin your journey to better gut health. That's PerfectPickler.com. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>